tonight we will be reading how the second grade got $8,205.50 to visit the Statue of Liberty by Nathan Zimmelman. Report on the drive to collect funds for a visit to the Statue of Liberty. Susan Olson, treasurer and reporter, second grade, Newton Barnaby School. Old newspapers, cardboard boxes, and all kinds of paper drive. The second grade collected two tons of all kinds of paper for which we were paid $30 by Mr. Abner Carmody, recycler of everything. Expenses. $2, which we had to pay five younger brothers and sisters to borrow their wagons, which had been our wagons in the first place. $10, which we had to give to Mr. Abner Carmody, recycler of everything, to get Johnny Payne's father's comic book collection, or Johnny would be in serious trouble when Mr. Payne found out it was gone. $5, which was the cost of the ticket our principal, Mr. Harold Hope, got because Robert Rose, who was sent with a quarter to put in the parking meter, got worried about a dog fight and forgot. Mr. Hope's regular parking space was covered by over two tons of old newspapers, cardboard boxes, and all kinds of paper. Profit. The old newspaper, cardboard boxes, and all kinds of paper drive has made a profit of $13. We are practically on our way. Lemonade stand, expenses. No charge for 30 lemons, which Cecil Cooper's neighbor's tree contributed from the branches that hang over into Cecil Cooper's yard. No charge for 10 pounds of sugar, which was given by Geraldine Arthur's mother, who was starting her weekly diet. No charge for a wash tub, which was loaned to us by Mr. Abner Carmody, recycler of everything, for a free drink of lemonade whenever he passed by. No charge for glasses, a small table, a dipper, water, and ice cubes, which we got from Eleanor Robbins' mother, who is always giving us stuff so Eleanor will be popular. It helps. In total, the expenses for the lemonade stand were no dollars and no cents. Profit. Our income from the lemonade stand was no dollars and no cents because after we had set up the tub under the shady elm tree and filled it with water and ice cubes and squeezed the lemons and mixed in the sugar, Eleanor's cat fell out of the tree into the tub and Eleanor's mother made us pour out all the lemonade after we fished out the cat. However, I am happy to report that the lemonade stand took in $10 from Eleanor Robbins neighbor, Mr. Norbert Norval. He was laughing when he gave us the money. I don't think he likes Eleanor's cat. Babysitting and dog walking, expenses and profit. Nothing and nothing. Nobody trusts a second grader to babysit anybody, even baby brothers and sisters. All the dogs in this town walk each other. Candy sales, expenses. No charge for three pounds of chocolate fudge full of walnuts, which was hurried out the back door and handed to us by Scott Alexander's mother, after he brought a five cavities report home from the dentist. One dollar for one box of aluminum foil to fancy wrap the candy for sale. Refund of one dollar for one box of aluminum foil, which was not needed 
after Geraldine Arthur's mother ran out of her house screaming, tomorrow starts another week to start another weekly diet and bought the three pounds of unwrapped chocolate fudge full of walnuts. Profit. Our candy sale profit was seven and a half dollars, which Geraldine Arthur's mother gave us after her first beaming bite. We are getting closer to the Statue of Liberty. Car wash. Expenses. No charge for three boxes of genuine, non-detergent, non-anything, pre-World War II soap flakes traded by Mr. Abner Crom Carmody, recycler of everything, for three car washes to be given as soon as he finishes putting together his car from the parts he's been saving. Five dollars, which we paid to Mr. William W. Williams for the use of the empty service island where he's going to put in a second gas pump as soon as business gets better. No charge for sponges, towels, and buckets contributed by parents when we promise to remember to bring everything back. Because of all the excitement, uh, we kind of forgot to pick them up and somebody else kind of went off with them. The sponges, towels, and buckets will cost an extra $20 to replace. That makes $25 worth of expenses. Profit. After Charlie Hendon pretended to throw a bucket of water through the open window of the first customer, our principal, Mr. Harold Hope, and the water kind of got away from Charlie, Miss Pinckney, our teacher, and Mr. Hope had to go around the corner to get a cup of coffee to settle their nerves. So they were not there when Charlie began showing Cecil Cooper what his father had taught him about driving and accidentally released the brakes and sent Mr. Hope's car rolling backward into the street aimed right at the doors of the First National Bank. Ms. Pinckney and Mr. Hope were also not there when the doors of the bank burst open and two men carrying canvas sacks rushed out. When they noticed Mr. Harold Hope's car rolling right at them, the men dropped everything and jumped back through the doors of the bank where they were captured by a smiling Ms. Henrietta Vinker the First National Bank's friendly guard. The second grade will receive a reward of $8,200. Since the high curb in front of the bank was bumped Mr. Hope's car to a stop without any damage, the total profit from the car wash was $8,175. Total profit on everything, $8,205.50. This will be way more than enough to pay for our visit to the Statue of Liberty. But Chief of Police Gates says that they take forever and a day to pay reward money, and we will probably be the third grade before we see a penny of it. This will not delay the visit. The parents of the second grade got together and collected enough money from each other for the trip. They said they needed the rest. We are on our way.